بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف First, I congratulate Imam of our time and then all of you for these great occasions that we have, birth anniversary of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam and Imam Zaydin al-Abidin alayhi salam. And in general, month of Sha'aban is a very blessed and happy month, and inshallah, we are going to witness birth anniversary of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Uh, I was uh, thinking what would be a kind of appropriate topic for tonight uh, because. It somehow belongs to different personalities. And also we are in the month of Sha'ban. And also I thought we live in a time that also there are lots of, you know, sufferings and lots of problems. So I thought let us discuss happiness tonight. So inshallah tonight we want to talk about happiness and khushhali, as we say in Farsi and some other languages. Uh, this is a very important topic, and uh, it's not only important for every believer, but it's also something that for philosophers also is very important. Many years ago, maybe 10, 12 years ago, we had a, a PhD thesis on comparison between uh, Mullah Sadra's understanding of happiness and some Western philosophers. So it's a very deep topic. I try, inshallah, to open this discussion tonight, and inshallah, maybe then, if Allah gives tawfiq, we can have a series on this, inshallah. I would like to start with this beautiful verse of the Quran uh, so that all our majlis, inshallah, will be blessed with the light of Quran. So please say salawat. <laughs> In Surah Yunus, verse 57, says, Ya Ayyuhannas, Qad lima fissudur, wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'mineen. O mankind, people, Ya ayyuhan nas, it's not only for Muslims, for, you know, everyone is called to benefit. Something has come from your Lord to you. This refers to the Quran, which is maw'idhatun min rabbikum. Quran is a maw'idha from your Lord. Who can better give me Mo'izza than the one who has created me and sustained me? Yeah, the best Mo'izza he can give me. And Quran is a Mo'izza. It means, uh, you know, sometimes when we have discussion uh, about akhlaq, we say Mo'izza is a specific instruction. Va'iz is different from a teacher of akhlaq. A teacher of akhlaq can teach tens, hundreds of people can listen to and everyone see you know, how they can implement. 
But Vaiz is the one that should give a specific advice. You know, like a physician who should examine you and give you a specific prescription. So Quran is more as that. So every person, young, old, man, woman, they can find what they need in the Quran. Just they need to tune themselves to the Quran. Quran is healing. Like the other ayah, So Quran is healing for what is in our chest. The problems that are related to our mind or our heart. Both are in the chest. Uh, it's not like a brain which is not in the chest. You know, physical brain is in head. But mind is related also to heart. And it's related to the chest. So sometimes we suffer from problems that affect our understanding. There are viruses that affect our understanding. For example, if I am suspicious, this makes me unable to understand. Someone does something without bad intention, I interpret it as something bad. Sometimes even people want to be kind to me. I say there must be a reason that they are kind to me. So if you are suspicious, no matter what people do, you always have one fixed interpretation. It's a problem. This is a virus if someone is suspicious. Sometimes people are suspicious about their wives or husbands. Makes life very difficult for both of them, not just for the ones. So it's a problem. Some people are pessimistic. It's a problem. They are always looking at negative side. They are always dismissing the positive side. This is not a problem. Also, there can be problems in the heart. Someone can be selfish, which is a very big problem. Sometimes can be greedy. Sometimes can be jealous. So Quran is shifa on lema fessudur for both kinds of problems, whether there are problems with our understanding or problems with our feelings or qualities of the heart. Quran is shifa for all of that. Wahudan. Not only Quran gives you shifa, but Quran also gives you direction that now that you are healthy, where should you go? You know? Because I need to get rid of my illness, but then I have to be given direction. Hodan. So gives direction. Warahm. Quran is mercy. Uh, in the discussion about mercy, we say that there are many, many things that in the Quran are attributed to Rahma. Rahma helps with creation, with sustenance, with guidance, with forgiveness. Everything is related to Rahma. Then after this ayah, Ayah 58. We receive this shifa, this mo'iza, this guidance, this mercy. Everything that we need, we receive because of what? Because of Allah's favor and Allah's mercy. Tonight is the birth of Hazrat Abu Fazl al Abbas. What does Fazl mean? We say he's Abu Fazl. So Abu Fazl means the one who is expected to give Fazl. So what is Fazl? Fazl is different from giving. Fazl is even different from gifting. Giving is very general. Sometimes I give something as a return. Sometimes I have borrowed and then I give it back. Gift means it's one side. It's without, you know, a prerequisite. I gift. But Fadl, in my understanding, is 
when someone gives you something that you don't own and he doesn't owe to you okay it's unexpected gift that goes beyond your expectation this is fatal i repeat unexpected gift which goes beyond your expectation for example if someone gives me a little money without reason is a gift or if I have worked for someone and he gives my salary my wage and something extra a little extra for example he should give me I don't know 1,000 pound for certain hours he gives me five pound extra this is not called fadl we don't say this person is called fadl yeah because he has just given a little extra if he gives 100 no fadl he has just given my right he gives a little bit extra again no fadl if he gives me so much that i am not expecting and i wonder that is fadl so if he has to give me 100 but he gives me 500 this is fadl so fadl is even more than generosity it's a high level of generosity so when we say hazrat abu fadl it means that he is someone that with his giving he surprises you and you you know sometimes people when they give too much then you wonder they, did they make mistake maybe they didn't count properly <laughs> so this is fadl allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi it's all happening because of fadl of allah and his mercy indeed allah not only he has fadl we say he has great fadl innakazul fadl alazim urzuqni warzuq ayali innakazul fadl alazim not only he has fadl he has great favor so everything happens because of fadl of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rahma this is a great bashara do you know why this is bashara why we can benefit from shifa why we can benefit from mu'izah why we can have guidance because of fazl of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a great bashara why because this means that me and you don't need to create anything we don't need you know to go to air you know to mars just receive fazl of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just don't deprive yourself We need to just be good receivers. We are not fabricating or creating or in, you know, inventing light. Light comes from Him. Everything comes from Him. We just need to open ourselves. So this is Bashara. That we are with someone that He is just there to give. The only thing is be a good receiver. Be polite and be kind to others. Yeah? If there is a generous person distributing gifts, what should we do? Be kind to others. He doesn't like us, you know, to annoy other people and you know put everyone you know behind and you know, say I want to take it myself. And also be kind and polite. Then Allah says. فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ Those who know Arabic, they know فَلْيَفْرَحُ This is fa and لَيَفْرَحُ لَيَفْرَحُ is فِيلَ عَمْر فِيلَ عَمْر For the third party Plural third party male is لَيَفْرَحُ So Allah says Because of this they should be happy If we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, should we be happy or sad? We should be happy. <laughs> yeah? If you have 
father, mother, I don't know, someone who takes care of all your needs and gives you even more, gives himself or herself to you. Should you be happy or should you be sad? If we are not happy, is because we have not known him. We have not really understood the level of his fadl and rahmah. فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ This fadl and rahmah of Allah is better than money that you collect. Sometimes, you know, we say, this day was a very good day. Why? Because I made this much money. My business, you know, today was very good. I have a good house, good car. Okay, you can be happy for this, but this is limited. The main thing is that don't get excited by these things. Be happy with Allah, not with little money that you have been given. Little position or fame or power that you have been given. Because of this, they should be happy. Not because of other things. Because of having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is the beginning of our discussion. And if you want to reflect more, so please go to Surah Yunus, verse 57 and 58. Now I want to read for you some hadith and a little bit uh, open this discussion about joy and happiness we have many many hadith about making people happy this is a very important aspect of islamic community islamic uh, collective life that every person should try to make other people happy if happiness was not a great thing why you know we are asked to make each other happy it's very important to make each other happy uh, if you go to al kafi one of our you know four major collections of hadith you find there are many hadith about making mu'mineen happy so i read for you some of these hadith and inshallah try to explain and then we continue inshallah this discussion for example there is a hadith from imam raza alayhi salam Man farraja an mu'minin farraja qalbahu yawm al qiyama. Something like this, my uh, picture is not completely clear. Whoever helps a mu'min to have no concern, no worry. Sometimes you have ham, ham is concern in Arabic. And then someone comes and does tafrijul ham, means to deliver you from that concern. So for example, I am ill, or someone in family is ill. A person comes and talks to me and you know, helps me, gives me hope, shows me, for example, doctor, says you know, other people have got this. In different ways, tries to make me happy and tell me that you can overcome this concern. You are greater than this concern. Imam Raza says, on the day of judgment, your heart will become happy. It will be made happy because you made a mu'min, a mu'min happy in dunya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna fil jannate daran. In heaven there is a house. 
Yogalulahu Darul Farah. This is called House of Joy, House of Happiness. Everyone says, you know, how can we get to that house? I want to go. Imagine, heaven is full of joy. Yeah? But then, inside heaven, if something is Darul Farah, means you are wholeheartedly happy. Yeah? You are eternally happy. La yadkhuluha. Ella man farraha yatam al mu'minin. That is especially reserved for people who make orphans happy. If you can make orphans happy, that's the greatest uh, opportunity. You have to go to that house. In another hadith, Rasulullah said, Enna fil jannati daran yugalu laha darul farah la yadkhuluha illa man farraha sibyan. No one can go into that house unless you have made children happy. And orphans are also children because, you know, we say in fiqh, la yutma ba'd al If someone becomes mature, orphan is not called, you know, he, we know. So if you make children happy, especially orphans, then Allah will make you especially happy in heaven. In Al Kafi, volume 2, page 188, Babu Idhal Surur Alal Mu'minin. Imagine how much we have opportunities. You know, if sometimes it takes me just one minute to make another person happy, even sometimes less than a minute to make someone happy. Yeah, we shouldn't miss the opportunity. And we all need, you know, these days especially to make each other happy, you know. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله You know, narrator of this hadith is Abu Hamza Somali from Imam Baqir, Imam Baqir from Rasulullah. من سر مؤمنا فقد سرني Rasulullah says, if you make a mu'min happy, you have made me happy. I am sure everyone loves to make Rasulullah happy. And maybe you think, you know, unfortunately today Rasulullah is not with us, you know, otherwise I would have made him happy. I would have offered him, you know, whatever he needs. But the Rasulullah says, make a moment happy, you have made me happy. And if you make me happy, what happens? وَمَنْ سَرَّنِي فَقَدْ سَرَّ الله. If you make Allah, uh, me happy, you make Allah happy. Of course, this is not emotional happiness for Allah. Allah doesn't have emotion. But it means that Allah would be pleased with you. Look at this beautiful hadith. Jabir from Imam Baqir alayhi salam. You know, now, after majlis, you, for example, greet your brothers and sisters at home, in work, everywhere. You can just be, you know, sad. Or you can just ignore them. Or you can make a little effort to smile. It makes a big difference. Make niya that for the sake of Allah, I want to meet my brother or, for example, sisters, you know, their sister, happy. Just with a smile. Man tabassama. Sorry, tabassum rajul fi wajh akhi hasanatun. If you smile to the face of your brother, and the same for sisters, is hasana. Vasarful qadha anhu hasana. If something has gone to the eye of your brother or sister, you know, qadha, sabar, Amir al Mumni said, sabartu ba fil ayn qadha. Or in Dua'i Nudbe, we say, Hal Sometimes something goes at dust or, you know, something goes inside and the eye is in pain. If you take this from the eye of a mu'min, this is hasana. Hasana is not just 
Salat and Quran. They are hasana, of course, very important, but being kind to each other is also hasana. Wama ubidallahu bishayin. This is Imam Bagr alayhi salam. You know, I am not saying this. Imam Bagr alayhi salam saying, Ma ubidallahu bishayin. Ahabba illallah. Allah has not been worshipped or served by anything that is more lovable to him than men edkhal surur ala al mu'min. To make a mu'min happy. For the sake of Allah, make someone happy. Of course, it doesn't mean that we stop our, you know, salat or, but they are all important. But a moment after doing this wajibat, then when you are kind, you are considerate, you are manifesting rahmah of Allah to other people. This is what Allah loves. Because here you are not selfish. I can do some ibadat and be selfish. Yeah? Sometimes even in our ibadat, we are selfish. For example, we go to the shrine and, you know, we want to be very close to the chamber, to the zari, you know, when it's near the head. Sometimes you see people say two rakat salat and leave. They give chance to other people. Sometimes you see people keep praying, praying, praying. And they are sitting sometimes, you know, as soon as they see someone is coming, they start praying. So... This is selfishness sometimes. I'm not one to judge because sometimes maybe they have been asked by people to do this, but it can be sometimes selfishness. I want to have this place for me only. I don't want to give chance to anyone else. So there is a chance that even our ibadat, our acts of worship sometimes can be mixed with our ego. Yeah? Ego is not always, you know, to, for example, take money of people or, you know, right of people. Ego can sometimes be in depriving people from religious things. But when I am trying to make a mu'min happy, this is less likely to be out of my ego. Because I am going out of my way to make someone happy. In another hadith, we have very beautiful hadith actually there is a ch chapter but uh, i don't have time that if you have ability to help people with their hajat this was just to make them happy but many times people cannot be made happy unless you also help them with their needs yeah so for example if my child is lost and I'm looking for my child, you cannot make a joke and you know, expect me to become happy. You have to help me to find my child. <laughs> yeah? So, if you can help people with their hajat, the reward is many, many times more than Umrah. Umrah takes a you know, few days at least. Sometimes, you know, one week, two weeks. But just help people with their hajat is more rewarded than several Umrah. So, we have to look for opportunities to make people happy. But what about ourselves? This part is very obvious and I think more or less we know how much we practice is another thing. But sometimes people think that it's for others, but for myself, I don't need happiness. Maybe I need to be always sad. I need to always, you know, look very serious, for example, and, you know. The answer is, we have to find the balance. We have to understand 
to what extent and in what aspect we are supposed to be happy. Okay? For example, if I am happy superficially and I have deep problems and I don't feel anything about them, I'm just ignoring them. Is this wise? Is this what Islam would be happy with? No. Suppose my family, my children are in big problems, but I'm always happy. I go meet my friends and you know enjoy ourselves. You know we watch, we, you know, we go to coffee shop, etc. I'm really happy, and my family are suffering. Is this a good thing? Or for example, a student who doesn't do his study, he doesn't do his homework assignment, but he's always happy, you know, going around and you know, taking you know, friends outside, etc. He's very happy, very good, but is not doing anything serious. This is not good. If you want to analyze, we can say we have three levels of happiness. One level is the lowest, the most superficial one. And that is when we do something that gives us physical pleasure, physical happiness. This is the lowest level. I am physically happy because I am eating something delicious, for example, or I have very comfortable bed. You know, I sleep, you know, everyone is going to work and study, but I sleep till 10, 10 11, 12, I am happy. <laughs> My wife says, you know, why you don't work? I say, and I'm very happy, everyone should be happy. You can try also to be happy. So this kind of happiness is the lowest level of happiness. This is because you are satisfied your physical desires. You get some pleasure. But this is not what we are talking about. Sometimes there is middle level happiness. And that is when you satisfy what we call vahm. Human beings have certain types of desires which animals don't have. But these desires which are only available in us are not intellectual. This is where we are in transit between being animal to a human being. For example, no animal has interest in becoming famous. Yeah? If you say to a cow, you know, you know, we can make you very happy. We put your picture on, you know, every bottle of milk. <laughs> the, the cow doesn't bother about this. You know, give me more, you know, grass. I, I, I don't bother about fame. You know, I don't want fans. I want, you know, grass. So, for animals, you know, fame is nothing. Oh, you know, we, we make you leader of all these cows. You know, I don't want to become the leader of these cows. <laughs> I am leader of myself. So they don't have these kinds of pleasures that we have. And sometimes or most of the time for these, even we can kill each other, fight each other. If not all, most of the wars in the world are because of this kind of things. Even people are happy sometimes to lose their life to become famous or to be considered as a hero. You know, sometimes people who have no faith, no akhirah, still they are happy to be killed so that people afterwards, they say he's a hero. What is the benefit of people telling me, you know, you are a hero when I die, if I don't believe in the hereafter? But people get pleasure. Even people get pleasure from thinking that people respect them. Even thinking gives them pleasure. But the third level, which is only available in human beings, is when you satisfy your 
intellectual desires. When your aql is pleased, for example, when you gain knowledge and ma'rifa, a practical, of course, one, not something that doesn't make any difference. When you learn something that makes you better understand the meaning of your life, what type of pleasure you get? You get human pleasure. This is not available in animals, and this is not available in the people who are in between. They say that Sheikh Tusi Radwanullah Ta'ala Alai used to sometimes in the middle of night in you know his study and research finding answer for some of the questions. And in the night he was so happy that he was saying and sometimes maybe going out of his room without disturbing anyone and saying how can kings and children of kings find this pleasure? But this pleasure is for someone in that caliber. If you say, you know, to someone, you know, you study for years and then you find, you know, something new or your question is answered, you get a pleasure which is greater than anything, they may not understand. Yeah? Like a child, you know, they don't understand the pleasure of marriage, for example. The child doesn't understand. The child, you know, thinks chocolate is more important than marriage. Yeah? <laughs> the child doesn't understand. We don't understand the pleasure of Imam Zainul Abidin when he's making dua. Yeah? It, we don't understand. Because we are compared to him like a child. But if we taste at least that pleasure, then we know that it's much greater than any pleasure that we have been experiencing so far. Therefore, Imam says, Man minka Who has ever tasted the sweetness of your love and then has looked for alternative? If you look for alternative for religion, it's because you have not experienced true religion. There's no, you know, nothing better than faith. So, we need to train ourselves to go for the highest level of pleasure. If we want to experience human life, if we want to experience faith life, first we have to be true human beings and true mu'min, yeah? We cannot be mu'min without being good human beings. <laughs> This comes together. So, I read one hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam to see that how we should find balance in the life. And let me see also time. Yes. So maybe this is my last point and inshallah I hope we can continue this discussion sometime. Uh, I have a lecture also on this topic of how to divide your time, you know, and plan your day. Amir al Bumini says, Ejtahedu fi an yakuna zamanukum arba'a sa'at. Work hard so that you can have your time divided into four parts. Sa'a doesn't necessarily mean 60 minutes. This is a new thing. In the past, sa'a meant a portion of time. So try to have four elements in your life and give them time. Sa'atun limunajatillah. Part of your time should be between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This gives you intellectual pleasure. This gives you deep pleasure. This gives you eternal pleasure. This gives you a pleasure that can endure and survive death. Sa'atun l'amr al-ma'ash. You need also part of your time for earning halal rizq and 
look after your needs, your family, so that you have respectful life, you don't want to be burdened on others, on others, etc. This is also good. This gives you pleasure with respect to your physical needs and also other needs. Sometimes with the money you can also go for learning, for ziyara, etc. You can do charity work. Sa'atun le mu'asharat al ikhwan wa thiqat. We all need, these are not to be necessarily equal, but we need also one a slot of time for meeting good people. Human beings need to meet each other. You know how much we suffered during COVID? Yeah? And uh, unfortunately, we haven't yet still been able to go back to what we used to be. Inshallah, we should, you know, do more than before so that we do qaza <laughs> for what we have missed. Meeting other people, especially mu'mineen, good people, virtuous people, as people that you can rely is also a very important part of human life. If we don't meet, if we don't interact with family, with friends, community, then we are going to lose a lot in our Iman and in our humanity even. Even humanity is a matter of being in touch. And these are the people that you are Ayubakum wa yukhlesuna lakum fil batin. I especially this say this to my uh, young you know uh, brothers and sisters, but everyone needs this. Who is a good friend? A good friend is that is very sincere and honest with me and tell me my problems. Unfortunately, we, we are run away from people who tell us our problems. But if someone loves me, should tell me my problem, not in front of others. Yeah? We should say problems in private. But I should be very happy that I have a friend that tells me my problem. But sometimes in schools, in universities, you know, if someone tells us our problems, they say, this is not my friend anymore. I just want that always support me. Whatever I do, you know, I have a problem with my parents that you are right. <laughs> I don't go home, you are right. This is not a good friend. A good friend is that sometimes makes you laugh and sometimes it makes you cry out of honesty. So, Amir al Mumin says, Sa'atun le munajat Allah, Sa'atun le amr al ma'ash, Sa'atun le mu'asharat al ikhwan wa thiqat, alladhina yu'arrifuna uyubakum wa yukhlisuna lakum fil batil, wa sa'atan takhlawna fiha lilladhatikum fi ghayr muharram. And you need also some time for Pleasure which is not haram, for halal pleasure. It can be having good meal, it can be, I don't know, traveling, it can be spending time with your uh, family, it can be playing, it can be watching a good film, but should be something which is not haram. Haram doesn't give us real pleasure. Haram is like someone who is thirsty and drinks salty water. <laughs> you enjoy for seconds, but then your thirst becomes more. So, should all our life be to just get laza? No. Should we disregard having laza? No. We should find the balance. Should we ignore ordinary or, you know, kind of, you can say, worldly laza? Again, no. Islam is not saying, you know, you should not have any laza in food or etc. You know, looking at, you know, flower, per using perfume. No, you can have and you need to have this type of laza. Because your heart may rebel against you if you deprive your heart from this kind of laza. But what is important is not to be restricted to this. Know that greater laza 
still is waiting for you. So enjoy what other people enjoy if it is halal, but say it should be at the service of me reaching a higher goal. Like for example, maybe I am as a student, I am in the dorm, I can enjoy my food, my meal, I can enjoy walking, I can enjoy a sport, but I shouldn't forget that my main pleasure comes when I succeed in my study. Yeah? If I day and night study and don't do anything, then maybe after some time I develop some illness or sickness. I need to look after my body. I need to look after my physical you know, desires to a certain extent. But the greater pleasure comes when we develop our virtues when we satisfy our intellectual desires, when we work for something that gives us pleasure in the hereafter. So, we can say without any exaggeration that the whole life of Iman is a matter of going after pleasure. But what type of pleasure? What is Sa'ada? Sa'ada means happiness. But what kind of happiness? Who is happier than Amirul Mu'minin? Who is happier than Imam Zainul Abidin? Who is happier than Imam Hussein alayhi salam? If you look at the level of joy that they had in their life, the le level of feeling satisfaction, they were the happiest people. But it doesn't mean that they didn't have you know, physical pain. They had physical pain, but they were happiest people. And this is still in dunya. In the hereafter, they would be you know, only happy and others who have not worked on the other side would not be happy. So Amir al muminin says, بِهَازِهِ السَّاعَةِ تَقْدِرُونَ عَلَى الثَّلَاثِ سَاعَةِ With this fourth one, you can then do justice to other three. So even for your munajat, for ma'ash, and for relation with mu'mineen and friends, you need lazza, which is not haram. Okay? لا تحدثوا أنفسكم بفاقر ولا بطول عمر. Find a balance. Never say to yourself, you know, I will become poor. I will become poor. I will suffer, my children will be bad, my husband is going to leave me, my wife is going to betray me. Why you keep saying these bad things to yourself? On the other hand, don't dismiss the problems and say, you know, I am going to live 1,000 years and I am going to have no problem in the world. Then you dismiss the risks. So you have to find the balance. Amir al Mumini says, For your nafs, give him, give her what need, needs from dunya. But, من الحلال, it should be halal, number one. Number two, something which is not in conflict with moru'ah. Sometimes there are things which are halal, but it would damage your reputation. You know, there are people, people who do something, we say, you know, why you do, it? for example, they say, no, Marja said it's halal. Yes, Marja said it's halal, but it didn't say that, he didn't say that this is advisable. Yeah? For example, you know, if you, eat food, walking, you know, take a you know, meal, you know, for example, I don't know, biryani and curry, and while you are walking, you know, and you know, talking, you know, you are eating and, you know, drawing. Maybe if you are, for example, outside city, it's halal. But is it advisable? Is it a life that a moment would do? Or moment try to behave in the way that would be very honored by others, yeah? Maybe for a man to go outside 
you know, for example, without covering, you know, some part of his, you know, I don't know, shoulder, etc. Maybe it's halal. But is it advisable? Is it something which is uh, compatible with moru'ah? So Amir al says says Laza should be not haram and should not conflict with moru'ah, with nobility. Vama la sarafafi and should not be done with in excess. Okay? For example, I say, you know, ice cream is very good, but then I, you know, every day, for example, take, you know, 50 ice creams. It's a israf. It's too much. I say, you know, for example, you know, drink is good, but I take too many, uh, you know, drinks. Vasta'inu bidhalika ala umur al-deen. Amir al says, okay, give halal and, you know, noble kind of pleasure to your nafs, so that your nafs then listens to you when you want to do something for your religion. It's like a horse. You give food to the horse, but then you tell the horse, take me to wherever I want to go. Your body and your nafs must be fed by you, but must be obedient to you. Unfortunately, sometimes we ask the horse, where should I go so that you enjoy more? <laughs> It's the way you know, we look at our nafs. Where do you enjoy more? I go there. Where should I live that you enjoy more? I should ask my horse, or my horse should listen to me. I should ask my nafs and body, or my body and nafs should ask me. So this is the question. So Amir al says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِذَلَكَ عَلَىٰ أُمُورَ الدِّينَ فَإِنَّهُ رُوِيَ لَيْسَ مِنَّا My last sentence. لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ تَرَكَ دُنْيَاهُ لِدِينَهِ أَوْ تَرَكَ دِينَهِ لِدُنْيَا It's not one of us who disregards dunya for religion, abandons dunya, doesn't do anything for dunya, for body, for health, for, you know, job, rest. Just, he says, I am focusing on religion. He's not one of us. Or if someone does everything for dunya, and akhirah is not important. We should have both. But when we say both, it doesn't mean equal. Remember, feed the horse, but tell the horse where to take you. <laughs> okay? You don't neglect the horse, but you decide. So when you say deen and dunya, it doesn't mean equal. It means have dunya for the service of religion for the service of your faith, for the service of your virtues and humanity. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this very blessed night to help us in our life struggle so that inshallah we will be always well oriented. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us overcome any obstacle on our way towards him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to establish a community which is fulfilling the requirements of being a community of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen ties of brotherhood and sisterhood among us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the souls of all marhumin, especially those who have rights upon us, those who have given us this faith, this iman, this aqidah, this connection with Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam, may Allah inshallah bless the souls of all of them. And may Allah inshallah give shifa to all people who are ill. May Allah give hajat of all mu'minin and mu'minat, especially those who have asked us to pray for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hasten the coming of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guide us and take us to the direction that we would bring joy to the heart of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And we especially, especially don't want to be additional pain for Imam. Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. May Allah give long life to our maraja, to our ulama, to elderly members of community, to volunteers, to teachers, 
Everyone who is bringing something good to, to us, may Allah give them, inshallah, very blessed and long life. And may Allah include us among the people that are grateful for all his blessings. Blessings that we have received or blessings that Allah has given others. As mu'min, we want to be grateful for all blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to any person, to anyone. Inshallah, in these days and nights that we are approaching middle of Sha'ban, we should try to do something extra, some more dua, some reflection, some ziyara, so that inshallah for the 15th of Sha'ban, we are full prepared inshallah for connection to Imam of our time. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you very much. Uh, Shaykh, no, we have some time for questions, if that's okay? Sure. Any questions from the gentleman? Lady? Alaikum. Alaikum. Thank you for your lecture. Really Alaykum. appreciate it. Um, I had a question. You know, when you talk about happiness, and when we reflect on our journeys to happiness, uh, towards the beginning of the lecture, you mentioned uh, Surah Yunus, Ayah 57, where we are asked to take happiness because it is given by Allah. Yeah. But when we look at Surah Sharah, Shar I think I might have the name wrong, and Allah talks about expanding of the chest. Yes. Alam nashra laka sadra wa waza anan ka wizra. Inna mal usri yusra. Inna mal usri yusra. To what extent is that journey to yusra, does it have to go through difficulty? And I think I want to reflect on that beginning part of the ayat that Allah says, Inna ma'al. Ha does that happen alongside or is that a linear journey? And if it is a linear journey, then perhaps are we getting stuck on this idea that we have to go through difficulty in order to get to happiness, whereas happiness is just given. Um, and I wanted to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, very good question. So, you know, we said there are three levels. When it comes to the first and second level, it's not possible to have always happiness. Because dunya, this world, is world of conflicts. Yeah? World of competition. World of shortage. We cannot have every person physically happy. Some people become ill. Some people have accidents. Yeah? So, but when it comes to the third level, everyone can be happy. There is no limit, there is no restriction. Every person can be deeply happy when it comes to the intellectual happiness, okay? Now, with the first and second, there are lots of difficulties expected. We have created man in difficulty. Allah said to Adam, be very careful if shaitan sends you outside, you will have suffering. Okay, so in the first level and second level, there are problems. But the good news is that it's not that it's only problem. Whenever there is problem, there is also help. And a moment knows that Allah would never leave him or her alone. Okay? Just we need to ask for help and be patient. And interestingly, it doesn't say, It says, So with difficulty, there is ease. Not that later it comes. So it can be together. And also, another good news is that human beings have great capacity to cope with problems if they are prepared internally. You know, maybe sometime, you know, when I am challenged, I think this is end of my capacity. I cannot take more than this. Yeah? But then 
you see, you went to more difficulty and still you are okay. <laughs> you go to, yeah. Like for example, a, a student in primary school gets the, for example, maths paper. Says this was the most difficult, you know, pay exam, and I don't think there can be any exam more difficult than this one. But then he goes to secondary school. That's, that was like just drinking water. So we have unlimited capacity for coping with these problems and come successful. We should not lose our morale. We should not lose our hope. Yeah, and unfortunately, whether we like it or not. 99%, maybe 99.99% of people, if they are not challenged, they don't grow. Someone has to challenge us so that we grow. Many of the things that you know and you have learned and skills that you have got, if there was no need, then you would not have done so. Either you have need to make m money out of this or you want to be respected by people but imagine if you were the person that whatever you wanted you had you would not learn any science would not learn any skill so we have to be challenged so that we grow any other question <coughs> assalamu alaikum alaikum uh, quick question uh, sheikh thank you wonderful talk um so uh, you spoke about three types or three levels of happiness. Um, I think perhaps above of intellectual desire, there is also one more level, which is love, right? And uh, the type of love is a bit different from the other three. Um, and uh, it's just completely categorized of something else that there is no much calculation when we, we speak about love of Allah. Any, any sort of comment on, on that one? Uh, I think true love is intellectual. Is Although there? in some literature, you know, they try to say either you go by aql or by heart. Either you go by reasoning or, you know, love. But Islamically, true love comes with aql with ma'rifa, with knowledge, with understanding. Therefore, it's not emotional. It's not emotional. Yeah, it's intellectual. No, it's, it's, emo it's not emotional, but I think there is, there is a subtle change, subtle difference between intellect and love. They are, perhaps they are, they are pointing to the same thing, but they're addressing different aspects of that. Agle, in Islamic sense, comes with love, comes with iman, comes with virtues. Aql is not just, uh, you know, reason. Therefore, we prefer to use intellect. So aql is automatically coming with not being selfish. Yeah, so therefore we say Muawiyah didn't have aql. Amir al muminin you know, said, Wallahi ma Muawiyah to ba'adha minni. Muawiyah had reason, but not intellect. Yeah, so intellect comes with love. So who who were the greatest lovers? Those who were greatest in aql. Therefore, you know we have junudul aql and junudul jahl. And junudul aql, if you have the army of aql, you have also love. You have happiness. Actually, in hadith junudul aql says. One of the junud of Agl is Neshat, and one of them is Farah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I know there are other questions, but um, I think time's running short, so we'll end there. Muhammad Wal, Muhammad Salawat. Allahumma salam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, brothers and sisters, just letting you know about our regular programs. Um, next Friday, we will be 